everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be crocheting the Victoria's German Shells shawl. All of the information on this shawl will be in the drop down description box. Thank you so much for watching, now let's get started. For this shawl, you are going to need about 970 yards of worsted weight yarn. You will also need a G 4.25 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a stitch marker, and a yarn needle for weaving in ends. To begin, create a slip knot. Now chain 10. After you have chained 10, slip stitch to your very first chain. Insert your hook, grab your working yarn and pull it through and then through the loop on your hook. For row one, I am going to use a chainless starting double crochet. You can chain three instead of doing this if you prefer. I do recommend this chainless starting double crochet for all of the virus or German shells patterns. To create a chainless starting double crochet, you're going to pull this first loop up like so until it's almost as tall as a double crochet. We're then going to hold it onto the hook with our first finger here like this and wrap our hook around that loop as if it's yarning over. We're then going to insert into the ring, grab our working yarn and pull up a loop. Here we have what resembles three loops on our hook, still holding that first loop with my finger yarn over and pull through the first two loops and yarn over and pull through those last two loops. And there we have something that looks like a double crochet. We're then going to place 19 more double crochet into this ring. To create a normal double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the ring, grab your yarn and pull up a loop, we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the second two loops. Continue around until you have a total of 20 double crochet. And of course, we're counting this first double crochet here. Here is row one complete. Before we begin row two, I just want to make sure that if you did chain three, that you definitely count that as your first double crochet. To begin row two, you can turn first if you like, chain three, that will count as your first double crochet, or you can do like me and do the alternative or chainless starting double crochet. So there we have our first double crochet, and then simply place one double crochet into each of our previous stitches all the way across. At the end of row two, I will meet back up again for row three. Here I am at the end of row two, and of course we need 20 double crochet on this row. So um, when you get to this alternative double crochet, your stitch may not look, the top of it may not look like a regular stitch. So you wanna make sure and not accidentally skip that stitch, but make sure you go into that stitch and you can just grab those two loops on the side and that will count as your the top of your stitch. All right, we are ready to begin row three. After you have turned your work to begin row three, you want to chain three plus one for a double crochet plus chain one. Or you can do the alternative starting double crochet. So I'm going to do that. and then chain one. Then you're just going to do that into each stitch all the way across. So double crochet, chain one. Here is my work at the end of row three, and I have 20 double crochet, all separated by a chain one. To begin row four, turn your work, and chain five. We're then going to skip two double crochet, one, two, and single crochet into this chain space right here. To single crochet, insert your hook, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook, 
yarn over and pull through those two loops. Now we're going to make three chain threes. For our first chain three, we're going to chain three, skip two double crochet, and a single crochet into the following chain space. And do that again, chain three, skip two double crochet, and single crochet into the following chain space. And then one more time, chain three, skip two double crochet, and single crochet into the following chain space. So now we have our chain five and three chain threes. From here we're going to create a corner. So this is going to be the tip of our shawl here. Chain five, skip two double crochet, and single crochet into that chain space. Chain five again. Skip two double crochet, and single crochet into that next chain space. Now create three chain threes. So we're going to mimic just like what we did on this side. And for this last spot here, we're going to mirror this side over here and chain five. Then a single crochet into the top of that double crochet. We have a chain five, three chain threes, two chain fives, and then three chain threes, and a chain five. To begin row five, turn your work. You can now do a chain three or the chainless starting double crochet. Then place nine more double crochet into this chain five space here. Now we have a total of 10 double crochet into that first chain five loop. Single crochet into your next chain three loop or this first chain three loop. And now we're going to place two chain threes over this space. So chain three, single crochet into the second chain three loop. Chain three, and single crochet into the last chain three loop. Now going right from that single crochet, we're going to place 10 double crochet into each one of these chain five loops here. So right from that single crochet, yarn over to create the double crochet. Go ahead and place 10 double crochet into each one of these loops and then I can meet back up with you. After placing 10 double crochet into each loop, you want to finish with two chain threes and 10 double crochet into your last loop. This is how that's going to look. To begin row six, turn your work, chain three, or do your chainless starting double crochet. Then place one double crochet into each of your previous double crochets on these arches. This is our second arches row. Once we get to those two chain threes, we want to go right from our double crochet and single crochet into that first chain, and then create one chain here. So we're gonna chain three, single crochet into the second chain, and then going right from that double crochet or that single crochet there, we're going to place one double crochet into each of our next 20 stitches. After you've done those 20 double crochet, you're going to single crochet into that first of the two chain threes, chain three, single crochet into the last of those two chain threes, and then go right from that single crochet and place 
10 more double crochet over this arch here. Here is how my work looks at the end of row six. And I just wanted to show you how it likes to ripple and um, kind of curve up at you a little bit like this. And you can just flatten it out and it's all set to go. For row seven, the chain one arches row, you're going to turn your work. And for this row, we're going to be doing what we did down here and double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So if you're chaining, you want to chain four. That's three chains for your double crochet and a chain one. Otherwise, I'm going to start with the chainless starting double crochet, chain one. Then double crochet into your next stitch, chain one. You're going to do that all the way across here until we have 10 double crochet, all separated by a chain one. Now for this last double crochet right here, you're just going to double crochet and don't chain one. We're then going to skip this chain three here and go straight into a double crochet over here and chain one. Double crochet, chain one. You're then going to do continue doing that chain or double crochet chain one all the way across here and of course you have 20 double crochet right here and then you'll mirror what we did here and not chain one you're just going to double crochet skip the chain three and double crochet into this very first stitch on this side chain one and then complete your work like that here is my work at the end of row seven to begin row eight turn your work and let's talk about row eight for a minute before we get going. So row eight is a valley loopy row, and this is the same row that we did down here, uh, where we chained five, three chain threes, chain five, chain five. So we're gonna be doing that up here again, except we are going to have a chain five over this valley right here. So let's begin that by chaining five. Skip two double crochet and single crochet into that chain space. Then three chain threes. We're skipping those two double crochet again. And then here we are at that valley. So for these valley spaces, we're going to chain five and skip four double crochet and then single crochet into that following chain space. And then three chain threes, and we're at the top or the corner, so we're going to do two chain fives. Then three chain threes, and we're at that valley again, so we want to skip the four double crochet and, um, well, chain five and single crochet then three chain threes, and lastly we want a chain five. Single crochet into the top of that last double crochet. So here's a quick recap of row eight. We have a chain five, three chain threes, chain five, three chain threes, uh, two chain fives, three chain threes, chain five, three chain threes, and lastly, a chain of five. So as you see here from the pattern, we will always be having three chain threes in between these chains of five. To begin row nine, first arches row, turn your work. For this row, we're going to be mimicking this row down here and place 10 double crochet into each one of these chain five spaces. Over the chain threes, we will be chaining two. So of course, chain three or do your starting double crochet. Then place nine more double crochet into that first chain five space. Single crochet into your first chain three and chain three. We're making two chain threes. 
then place 10 double crochet into this chain five here. And now we're just going to continue in this fashion all the way across. So 10 double crochets into your chain five spaces and then two chain threes over your three chain threes. I wanna take a quick minute here and talk about row nine, this row that we just finished. So row nine is an extremely important row in this pattern. First of all, because if you don't have your 10 double crochet into each one of these chain five loops, the pattern gets thrown off. So you absolutely need the 10 double crochet. The other tip that I wanted to show you is that when counting your double crochets, it's very easy to accidentally count this loop from your chain three as a post of your double crochet. And you definitely don't wanna do that because then you'll be short a double crochet. There is row nine all finished, and let's begin row 10. To begin row 10, I have turned my work and chain three or chainless double crochet to begin and then just simply place one double crochet into each of your previous stitches over the arches. So 10 double crochet. Now on this row, of course, we're going to be doing one chain three and then going right from that single crochet into your double crochet. So you wanna just continue in this fashion all the way across placing one double crochet into each of your previous double crochets. So 10 double crochet here, and then one chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, and 10 double crochet. Once you get to this double up here, you want to do 20 double crochet across those, and then just complete the row. Once this row is finished, I can show you how my work is looking. So here is row 10, all finished. Row 11 is a chain one arches row, so I have turned to begin. So do a chain three plus chain one if you're chaining, so four chains, or do your starting double crochet and chain one. Then double crochet, chain one, double crochet chain one. And then once we get over here, just make sure you're double crocheting, skipping the chain three and double crocheting. So once this row is finished, I can show you how it looks. Here is my work after row 11, chain one arches row. Row 12 is our half double crochet block stitch row. To start this row, chain three. This chain three is going to count as a half double crochet and chain one. Then into this first chain one space, place three half double crochet. To half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the space, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then place two more half double crochet into that same space. Skip two double crochet and place three half double crochet into the next space. Continue in this fashion all the way across your work. Skip two double crochet and place three half double crochet into the next space. Once you get to these valley areas where these two double crochet meet, make sure and count these as your two double crochet you're skipping. So you're going to have three half double crochet on this side and three half double crochet on that side. Here is row 12 all finished for me. And now turn to begin row 13. Row 13 is a V stitch row and you're going to start with an alternative starting double crochet and chain one or chain four, which will count as a double crochet chain one. Next, place a V stitch into this very first chain one space here. A V stitch is double crochet chain one, double crochet into the same space. Then go right from that V-stitch and place another V-stitch into the space between these two blocks here. Continue placing V-stitches in between each one of these half double crochet blocks all the way until you get to about here. 
then I'm gonna meet back up and we can talk about where we're going to place our double V stitch. Okay, so here I am basically at the top of my shawl here and I have grabbed a stitch marker. You can go ahead and use a piece of yarn if you like as well. If we look down here on our block row, we should have 10 blocks going from here to here. So these two valleys here on in the middle, we should have 10 blocks. So what you want to do is we need to place a double V-stitch at the very top. So count five blocks on each side, starting from this valley here. One, two, three, four, five. My stitch marker is gonna go right into this space between these two top blocks. You should also have five blocks on the other side. One, two, three, four, five for me. If you don't have five blocks on either side, check and make sure you have your 20 double crochet down here. Otherwise, that will mess up this row on top. A double V-stitch is going to be V-stitch. Chain one, V-stitch into the same space. On the next row, your double V-stitch is going to go right into this chain one space between these two V-stitches. So then from here, just continue placing one V-stitch in between each one of your blocks all the way down to the end of your shawl. Here I am at the very end of row 13 and I am going to place my last V-stitch into this chain one space at the end. Then chain one and double crochet into the top of your chain here. So you wanna go into the second chain. Turn to begin row 14. Row 14 is a repeat row. You're going to repeat this row for 15, 16, 17, and 18. Begin with an alternative starting double crochet into your first stitch, chain one, or chain four. Then V-stitch into your first chain one space here. Next, V-stitch into the middle of each one of your V-stitches. Continue in this fashion all the way up to the top of your work where you're going to place a double V-stitch again. So you're going to V-stitch into this first V-stitch here, then into that chain one space, place a double V-stitch. V-stitch, chain one V-stitch into the same space. Then V-stitch into your next V-stitch and to each one all the way down your work. Once you get to the very end, place a V-stitch into this last V-stitch, then V-stitch into this chain one space, chain one, and double crochet into your last stitch. At the end of this row, I will show you how my work is looking. Here is my work at the end of row 14, and as you see, it does like to ripple just a little bit, but once you flatten it out, everything lays quite nicely. So at the end of this row, again, this is what that looks like. I have V-stitched into my last V-stitch, V-stitch into that chain one space, then chain one and double crochet into your last double crochet. At the top of the work here, this is what that double V-stitch looks like going into the previous double V-stitch. Repeat this row until row 18. At the end of row 18, I will catch back up and we can move on with the pattern. At the end of row 18, this is how my work is looking. Here I have turned to begin row 19. Chain five, skip this chain one space and one V-stitch. Single crochet into this space between these V-stitches. Now make three chain threes. Chain three, skip one V-stitch and single crochet. And two more times. Now make another chain five. These are your large loops. Skip two V-stitches and single crochet. Now we are going to begin a row repeat. Chain five. Skip two V-stitches and single crochet. Then make three chain threes. Continue with this repeat all the way up until the point of your shawl. Here I am at the top or the point of the shawl. And right here is the chain one space between that double V-stitch. 
I did a chain five here and then three chain threes. Chain five, skip two V stitches and single crochet into that chain one between your V stitches at the top. Then chain five, skip two V stitches and single crochet. Then make three chain threes. From here you can do again the row repeat. Chain five, skip two V stitches and single crochet. Then make three chain threes. So the row repeat is chain five, skip two V stitches and three chain threes. Here I am at the very end of my shawl and I have chained five lastly. I'm going to skip this last V stitch, chain one space and single crochet into my last stitch. Turn to begin row 20. Row 20, begin with your alternative starting double crochet or chain three. Then place nine more double crochet into this first chain five loop. Then make two chain threes. So you want to single crochet into this first chain three here, then chain three, single crochet into the next chain three, chain three and single crochet into the last chain three. Now we can begin a row repeat. Into your chain five space here, place 10 double crochet. After placing the 10 double crochet, go right from that last double crochet and single crochet into your first chain three. Chain three, single crochet into the next chain three. Chain three, single crochet into the last chain three. And then you're just going to continue in this fashion all the way across your work and you're going to place 10 double crochet into each of your chain five loops and work two chain threes over your three chain threes. Once you get to the point of your work here, you want to have 10 double crochet and 10 double crochet. So there's gonna be 20 double crochet going over the tip of the shawl there. Then once you get down to the end here, go ahead and you're going to do 10 double crochet two chain threes and end with 10 double crochet. Turn to begin row 21. Here is my work after row 20. For row 21, we're going to be placing a double crochet into each one of our 10 double crochets here. And then one chain three over these. So you're gonna go right from your double crochet into a single crochet, chain three, single crochet. You're gonna do that all the way up your work and then of course here you're going to place 20 double crochet, 10 and 10. Work all the way back down your work, place 10 double crochet into that last arch there, and then turn to begin row 22. Here is my work at the end of row 21. Row 22 is a chain one arches row, and it's just like row 11. So you're going to double crochet into each one of your previous double crochets and chain one in between. Then when you get to these chain threes here, you're just going to double crochet, skip, double crochet. So no chaining in here. And here's how that is looking. Here is my work at the end of row 22. Row 23 is a valley loopy row, and this is basically a repeat of row eight. So we're going to place a large loop here, chain five, and then three chain threes, chain five, skipping those four double crochet, three chain threes, and continue all the way up. Once we get here, we're going to do a large loop, which is chain five, three chain threes, and then two chain fives here at the top of the shawl and continue like that. At the end of row 23, this is how my work looks. Row 24 is a first arches row, so you're going to place 10 double crochet into each one of your chain five spaces here and then two chain threes over your three chain threes. And this is basically just a repeat of row nine. So here's how my work is looking. I have 10 double crochet into my chain five space, 
Then go right from that double crochet and single crochet into your first chain three, chain three, single crochet into the second chain three, chain three, single crochet into the last chain three, and then go right from that single crochet into 10 double crochet. Continue in this fashion all the way across your work. And of course, when you get up here, you're going to place 10 double crochet and 10 double crochet um, right at the top and um, tip of the shawl. Once this row is complete, I will show you how it looks and we can move on to the next row. Here is my work at the end of row 24. Row 25 is just a repeat of row 10, and that is second arches row. So you're just going to place 10 double crochet into each one of your previous double crochet, and then place one chain three. So single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. Go ahead and do this all the way up your work. And at the end of this row, I will show you how my work is looking. Here is how my work looks at the end of row 25, second arches row. Row 26 is chain one arches row, and that is just basically a repeat of row 11. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, into each one of these double crochet here. Once you get to this chain three right here, you're just going to double crochet, skip and double crochet into your next double crochet. So that's gonna look just like this down here. Here is row 26 all finished. For rows 27, 28, 29, and 30, you're just going to repeat these four rows that we just completed. So you're going to repeat the valley loopy row, which was down here, the chain five, three chain threes, and then you're going to do the first arches row, which is 10 double crochet into each one of your chain five spaces and making two chain threes. The second arches row, which is right here, and that is double crochet into each one of your double crochets, making one chain three. And then this row that we just saw right here, which is the chain one arches row, and it's double crochet chain one, and of course you're going to double crochet, double crochet, as you skip over these chain threes. Here are rows 27 through 30, all finished. From here you can repeat row 12 through 30 until your shawl is of desired length. Once my shawl is the size that I want, I'm going to add a single crochet row to this flat edge here. I am also going to be adding a pico edging, but that is completely optional. To finish the flat edge of my shawl, which is this edge that runs along here, I like to just single crochet all the way across. And you can do one or two rows. I do find that this helps a lot with the finishing look of your shawl. So right here, I have just completed my last double crochet for my last row. And I'm just going to simply go around that post to single crochet, or you can also go into the stitch in single crochet like that. And then just place single crochets all along. There is no specific number, just so it looks how you would like it to look. Once that flat edge is all finished, you can either just fasten off your yarn or go ahead and do a pico edging. Now before I do the pico edging, I always do the flat edge first. I really feel like it makes a cleaner look. So I have done a single crochet right there in the end here, and I'm gonna do another single crochet. And you can go ahead and place two right in that corner to round the edge. Then single crochet into this chain one space here. Skip this double crochet and single crochet into the next chain one space. And then create a pico. So chain three. And slip stitch either to your very first chain here, or I like to go into these single crochet yarns on the side like this and I just slip stitch. Grab your yarn and pull it through and through. Then single crochet, single crochet, 
and Pico. If you feel like your single crochet and pico are really tight and your work is going like this, go ahead and go up to the H 5.00 millimeter crochet hook and this should help relax all of this. Of course, also pulling your work out and blocking your shawl after you're finished will help immensely as well. Once your shawl is all finished, make sure to weave in all your ends and give it a good blocking. Please make sure to check out the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Have a lovely crochet day, and I hope to see you again in my next tutorial. Bye.